Hello. Today we're going to wrap a label onto a bottle. This is a continuation of the series of videos for this assignment. The previous one was on using the pen tool. So first we're going to do is design a label and we just so happen to have a label that's been done in uh, Illustrator. This label is approximately five millimeters wider than what the bottle is. That just gives us a little room to play with when we're um, adjusting the size. Select all. I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back into Photoshop. Show me my layers palette. And I'm going to paste. And yes, I want it to be as pixels. I'm going to go OK. There's my label, and what I'm going to do, I'm trying to get it between this point here and that point down there. And I'm just going to move the label just like that, and it's just going to stick out either side. I'm just going to load it up so you can see it better. So it's just a little bit bigger, and we'll just come down a little bit more just where that point is where the bowl dips in. That will be just fine for us. OK, click Accept. Now we're going to go over to the uh, Transform tool. I'm going to get, click Warp. So now what we have, we have all these little um, tags we can click onto. I'm just going to pull across and try and keep my cursor straight when I'm doing it. I don't want to go down. As you can see, it really does actually make a difference to it. So just make sure I'm going to keep it straight. I go down to the bottom area. And by doing this as well, I'll show you in a second on this one here. If we actually move it in too far, it actually really affects the type quite a lot. By moving the moving in just a little bit, it doesn't affect the type too much, especially around the center, around the edges of the bottle. Of course, you expect the type to wrap around a little bit, and it does it slightly here. I'm just, and what we're looking for is just to get by using the handles, just get the uh, the label just over the edge slightly of the bottle. Now the bottles, oops, see what happens, see like that? We don't want that to happen. So I'll just press undo and I'll try that again, make sure I keep it going straight across. And you can see here where the bottle's just not quite square. There it is there. See how the bottle just dips in a little bit there? And what we can do is we can add another point. And we'll just pop it there and just bring it out a little bit and that should help straighten up the bottle a little bit more. We'll just go to this, this uh, handle here and just have a quick look and just bring it in a little bit like that. Now that's not too bad, I think. Not too bad at all. We'll just zoom out. I'll just zoom in a little bit more to have a look. I think that'll be okay. And if you want to check, we can just change, just change the opacity down a little bit and we'll just have a look at about there and it looks pretty good actually and that looks pretty good actually if anything we could probably could just bring in a little bit just here like that I think that'll be fine we'll click OK and we'll just change the opacity back to 100 and just zoom out a little bit OK now there's our bottle we have it with the label all set up. Now, you can, as you can see, the label is fairly flat. And I'm just going to select the label again. And I'm just going to press T. I'm going to press Control, Warp again. OK, what I'm going to do this time is that I'm just going to see how the base of it, we just need to show that the bottle is round. And again, I'm making sure I'm using a nice, even, downward strokes because you don't want to actually sort of start wobbling things around. So you're stretching it like that. All we want to do is just to make sure that it comes down in a nice good 
curve. We'll just do the same to the top. We'll just come down a little bit. Just a bit like that. And we'll just zoom out and have a look. Uh, it's not too bad. Like we could probably could go a little bit more on the base. Just a touch. Okay, maybe that should be right. We'll just click OK. Yeah, that's not too bad. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to get uh, click on our layer and we're going to push the uh, control button and we're going to make it into a smart object. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to put our cursor onto the little icon in the smart on the layer and I'm going to press the command button and click. And you'll notice now that my label has got a marching ants around it. It's now selected in that area. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put some shading onto the front of the label. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another new layer in by clicking the plus sign. I'm going to get my paintbrush. I'm going to go to about 500, uh, about there, that'll do. And what we're going to do is make sure it's on black. Just zoom out a little bit. And we're on a new layer. We've got this, and you watch this. And now we just go all the way down with our paintbrush. We can go up and down. And don't worry about it, it's painting black. We're going to change the opacity. And because we have the, the only the label selected, it's not going it's not painting anywhere else. Okay, so now we'll just go over to our opacity. Let's change it to multiply. And let's go... Uh, let's go to about there, about 40, 50%. I'll go 50, so yeah, that'll do. Okay, so that looks really, really good now. Okay, I'm going to press D for deselect. I'm going to mark that as our shadow. And now I'm going to make another line because actually I'm going to just hide this layer here. And here you can see this big highlight running down the bottle. Well, we need to have that highlight run across the top of the label. So there's various ways you can use a paintbrush uh, just to draw it down. But I think what we might do is we actually might make a little bit more uh, finesse to it. I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to call this layer Highlight or HL for short. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm just going to, with the pen tool, pen tool, pen tool, and I'm just going to mark out where approximately the the uh, highlight is. I'm going to get all the way down the bottom here to about there. I'm going to come across to about there. And then we go back up to the top. And that should give me a rough idea where my highlight is. This should be perfect. Okay. Now while I've got the made the pass, instead of asking making a selection, I can go straight into uh, the path tool and there's my path there. I'm just going to put here HL for highlight. Save the path. And we're just going to go to fill path. I've got a radius of one pixel, it's not much, but it's enough, and click OK. I'm going to deselect the path, and there's my highlight. I'm going to go back to my uh, layers, and there's my, there's my, I'm going to now go into screen, and we're going to change that down to about there. Now it's very harsh looking. There it is there. And what we're going to do is just going to give it a little bit of a furry edge to it. And this one I think is probably a good idea. Is we're just going to go into motion blur. And this works quite well. Around right about 15, yeah, 15, perhaps about there. Being the label, I won't have too much imperfections. But it's enough just to give that little bit of softness to it. 
Actually, we'll go 10. That'll do. And click OK. Yeah, that's not too bad. We might even just drop it down a lot more. It just only has to be a little bit of... What's that? About 20%? Yeah, I think that looks not too bad. Okay, now we're going to put another shadow on the other side of the label. Now I've put the highlight in, so I'm going to have my l shadow layer selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to, uh, back over to the highlight, the smart object thumbnail. And I'm just going to click again, command. And then there's the path, oh sorry, there's my selection around the label. And I'm just going to, with my shadow selected, I'm just going to put in just a little bit of highlight shadow there. There we go. And again, because it's on the same layer, I can adjust it a bit less, a little bit more, to what I think is reasonable enough. It's not too bad like that. And to show the full effect, off, on. That really gives it a nice sort of a cylindrical look. Okay, I'll deselect those little marching ants. And there's our bottle. We have a highlight, a shadow, and a label. Okay. Now we're going to try something, we're going to go one step further like we always do. We're going to put some droplets onto the bottle. Now this isn't uh, that hard, but there is a few steps involved. The first thing we do is make a new layer. And we'll call this droplets. Okay, and now what we're going to do is that we're going to go to our paint and we're going to want to select our paint and we're going to make it uh, 34 34 34 that's going to give us a nice dark gray click OK and we're going to fill the layer with our foreground color there it is there looks awfully dark don't worry now we're going to go over to our filter go down to render and oops render and into fibers. Uh, variants, we're going to have around about 30 and 1. And if I click that, see how it keeps changing all the time? We'll pick out something uh, about there. We'll see how that goes. Click OK. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, increase the contrast. We're just going to adjustments into levels. And we're just going to adjust this all the way up to make it quite dark and contrast about there. And we'll bring this one into about about there. I think that should be uh, should work out pretty good. Okay, nice contrast image. That's what we're looking for. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is actually add a bit of a blur to it. So we'll just go to blur, Gaussian blur, oops, Gaussian blur. And we're going to make it, let's see, uh, yeah, I think 5 will be fine. That'd be great. Now we're going to filter, uh, gallery, here we go. And we're going to start off with this one first. We're going to go to stained glass. Okay, now the stained glass uh, cell size is about that, I think about 20. We want a reasonable size, 20. And see how we can change here, the thickness of the border. And from our experience about those, and the light intensity, we don't want to get too bright because what happens is that we get too massive, too many um, highlights in the one area. So actually we'll keep that to zero so we lose a few highlights that's good that makes it very random looking was what we're looking for and click OK okay now we're going to go back to the filter gallery we're going to go up to sketch to plaster and I've already got this setting here what's this uh, 34 and 10 for smoothness and our light is coming from the top that's exactly what we want and click OK again 
Okay, I'm just going to zoom into this so you can have a look. That's what our little objects look like. Now what I'm going to do is go to the uh, Magic Wand tool. I'm going to select our background. I'm going to press Delete. And what I'm going to do now is deselect that. And go back over to a droplet layer. I'm going to go change the blend mode to overlay. And I might just drop that down. Um, about there. That doesn't look too bad. Okay. And you can see, there it is on our label. It looks really quite realistic, actually. Now, if you want a few more, what you can do is you can move the la layer around a bit. Until you get uh, more onto the front of the label. Or you can, what you can do is just grab the clone tool. And we might just uh, select that one there and just paint a few extra ones in here and there. There you get this nice big one here. I'll just put this in here, this area here. Make sure you get the whole. Last thing you want is half, half a droplet. I'm just going to paint a few more in here to make it look a bit more realistic. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now, what we want to do is we want to go to our paths, go to the bottle path that we've created earlier. I'm going to go make selection. I'm going to pair those going to be zero, click, and I can just go straight back into my layer palette and mask it out. And there's our final bottle shot. As you can see, it's come up pretty good actually, if I don't say so myself. Yep, I think that's pretty good. Alright, thank you very much. All the best.